Hello and welcome back to Authentic One here with Bruce Alexander. I'm your host, Bruce Alexander, and this is episode eight of Authentic On Air. Today, we are going to be talking about the cost of indecision. Uh, first, a little catch up. I just want to make sure everybody knows that I've been up to some things lately. I've recently gotten my certification as a warrior trainer, and what that means for you is that I actually have a foundation for what I've been doing for the last year in my business. If you've been following for any time whatsoever, you know that it's kind of been all over the place, but I understand now what it is I'm supposed to do to serve you, and that is to help you reconnect to the voice inside of you that has been silenced for so long. We'll talk about that more later. First, we're going to talk about indecision. What does it mean? Like, What, what do you think of when you think indecision? Probably you think about waffling on plans or not deciding whether you want chicken or beef at the wedding. What I'm talking about whenever I'm speaking about indecision is something a little deeper. There are big commitments that you have to have in life that most people don't even realize that they are not making. For example, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to be when I grow up? It's a question you start asking yourself from a pretty early age. But how often do you actually make the decision? Some people go on, say they want to be doctors as kids, and actually go on to carry through and do that. A lot of us say, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And that never changes. And you go from not knowing what you want to be when you grow up to being grown up and not knowing what you want to be. What is the cost of that indecision? For me, I can map it out pretty clearly. Not knowing what I wanted to do when I grow up and not making a decision as to what I was chasing with my life led me into, well, first being flat broke because I was trying to provide for a growing family of three about to turn into four, no, four about to turn into five and being really painted to, painted into a corner. I was desperate to provide for my family. That is the one thing I knew. And my father had been pushing me for years and years to become a firefighter because that's what he did. My uncle was on the I'm sorry, my cousin was on the same train. Great job. It's a great career. It'll take good care of you. Um, all of that may have been true. It was like financially, it provided me with a lot of opportunity. But because I didn't make a decision, life made a decision for me. So this path of the fire department started with a lot of sacrifice for my marriage. I didn't realize what it was I was getting into because again, this was not my dream job. This was not my plan. This was something that I hadn't made a decision about what I was gonna do. And I was pushed into literally out of survival. And as I'm getting into this job, I'm learning that there is a lot more commitment than I ever would have realized. I knew there was an academy, sure. I'd gotten in pretty decent shape for it. I did not realize that in order to be a firefighter, you have to give up your life. Everything that you know has to die. And for something that is your dream, that's totally worth it. For somebody who had done this out of desperation and had dragged his wife and kids out of everything that they knew in a home in Tulsa to Oklahoma City, basically kicking and screaming, but understanding that there was a future provided after getting paid peanuts for the first year and a half to two years, there was a future that in, you know, in the distance would be able to provide something solid for us. So that was the first sacrifice is giving up everything that we knew. The second sacrifice was complete isolation for my wife. I didn't realize this also didn't plan, didn't look ahead was going into the Academy was going to be a full-time job plus a full-time job. It took, the Academy was eight hours a day, plus you show up an hour early and you stay 30 minutes late. Then you have to study to learn the job. Then you have to exercise on top of the exercise you do at the job. If you're me and you are bigger than everybody else, you know, you formerly have asthma, you are not a natural long distance athlete. You have to do everything that you can just to keep up. So you spend all of your time outside of the hours of the academy studying for or training for the academy, meaning that there was literally 24-7, no free time. I slept, I ate, 
I went and trained or studied and I went back to the academy. That was the life cycle for the 16 weeks of the academy and then directly into EMT school in which the studying level went up. The training level got to go down a little bit, but the time was the time commitment was still the same. Working a full time job, you know, a little bit of a different schedule, of course, but it actually was more tiring because as a recruit, you don't get to sit down ever. And this cycle continued until a full year on the job. Meanwhile, my wife had just had our third child coming into this situation, was dealing with a toddler, a infant, and a a kid. You know, I think Penny was turning five or about four or five at the time. And she had to do all of this by herself because I didn't make a decision. I did not realize the strain it would put on our relationship, which I'll talk about the, the, the decision I didn't make before this that led to a already shaky foundation in our relationship. But this decision caused all types of stress because I wasn't willing to commit to something period. Life will commit for you whenever you're not willing to make a decision. I just want, I want to say that like you can, theorize and hypothesize all day long. But if you don't make a decision at some point, life is going to do it for you, whether it be in the aggressive way that it was for me, the bills are knocking down your door. You have constant anxiety and stress about finances. You have your father and your cousin screaming at you. There's an obvious out. There's an obvious out. Why won't you take it? You idiot. The decision was it was pretty hard to see any other option because I was reacting to life. Some people are reacting to life in much smaller ways. They, they choose not to go for the, the promotion that's out for work because they can't decide if they want to promote or not. Well, somebody else who's going to, is going to get that job because you can't decide if you want to promote. It's not just going to hang around for you forever. Somebody's going to apply for it and it's going to get taken. If you work at the place and you like the job, take the, take the promotion, (laughs) do it. The reason why I say that is because if you don't, somebody else will, and you cannot know who that's going to be. It is better to be the person making the decisions when you are at a place that you like than to have somebody new come in because you were afraid to be the person making the decisions. Now, if you just like what you do and you don't want to promote, make like make that decision. Here's the the opposite side of that coin of indecision. There is just as easily so much power available to you by just saying yes or no. There is a powerful, powerful potential in the powerful yes and the powerful no. Sometimes it is equally powerful just to, to make a decision to not commit to something. I had a recent uh, opportunity to continue with the warrior trainer program to move up a a level. And I was really kind of waffling on it. And I prayed and I was, I was per like before the prayer, I was in the place where I was trying to financially do the math, duct tape this together with our sorry, and rig this together with duct tape and bailing wire to figure out how to afford this next level of involvement. Well, in my prayer, God had a different plan for me and said that this was not right. And in being able to say, no, this is not right for me, I felt so powerful. For the first time in my life, I was not turning down an opportunity because I can't afford it or because I'm not sure. I was saying, no, this is not what God has in my plan for now. Now, having God on your side, sure, that makes it a lot more powerful. But if you're still making a decision based off of what you believe to be right, if that decision is no, it is going to empower you with taking that hesitation off the table. Hesitation is just a space where fear and anxiety creep in. You have to be powerful in choosing your yes and your no. Just do it. If there's something that you've been putting off for a long time, make a decision is like, is that really something I want? And if it is, I need to do it. Yes, I'm going to do it. Or 
you know what, that's actually not, that doesn't really align with what I want for now. No, I'm not going to do it. Own your powerful yes and your powerful no. That is one of the easiest ways you can change how you show up on a day-to-day basis. I like for me, um, I've gotten in a habit of, of taking walks. You know, if those of you who know me know that I'm trying to get over a pretty devastated back and work working out the way I used to is not really an option at the moment. So I've been taking walks to try to get my try to get my daily fitness in. And my daughters like to go with me. So it was there was a day where I was feeling kind of sore and I wasn't sure if I wanted to go. And my daughter said, Are we going on a walk today? And I said, Well, I'm not sure yet. And as soon as I as I said that, because I'd committed to leaving the land of maybe, I'd committed to being a person of yes or no. As soon as I said that, I felt my body become weak. It felt gross to me. It's like, oh, yeah, being a maybe person sucks. I don't like it anymore. So I immediately said, you know what? Yes, we'll go on a walk. We'll go on a walk at 2.30. And that's what time we generally go at. But choosing to be a man of yes or no has given me so much power, even in my weakened state of only being able to take small walks with my kids, just being able to say, yes, I'm going to do that or no, that's not going to happen today. It's improved my relationship with them because they don't know, they're not waiting on me to make a decision all the time. If I say no, they know it's a no. And if I say yes, they know it's a yes. And then I give them, you know, an action or a time to tie with it so they know they have something to look forward to. And something that's really important to realize is that a yes can be a yes for now and a no can be a no for now. So if you make a decision and things change, your heart changes, your opinion changes, you are allowed to take that yes and turn it into a no. It's just as powerful that way. You make a decision and you go with it until it doesn't work for you and then you make a new decision. Decisions are unlimited. You can make as many as you need to, but you have to make them to have that power available to you. So another way that this indecision has affected my life was asking the question, am I dedicated to my marriage? Once again, you would think that it's implicit in getting married, but I know that a lot of people out there know that it's not. You signing a sheet of paper does not say that in my heart, I've made the commitment to be dedicated to my marriage. It's a decision you have to actively make. And in my, in my youth, and my, you know, being a young married man, I didn't make that decision. Once again, there was a, a multitude of decisions I didn't realize I needed to be making. There were things I needed to be thinking about. I was immature and I was focused on how I felt, not making plans or not making decisions. And in not making that decision, whenever I was faced with strife in my relationship, I immediately instead of turning inwards into myself or into my marriage, I started looking elsewhere for relief. And the the thing I take accountability for is it doesn't matter where the stress was coming from. If I had made a decision earlier on, and you know, in hindsight's 2020, but if you make, if you are not making these decisions, you are just as liable to be as trapped as I was. But in not making that decision, I was giving myself a path that should have never existed. If I had said, I am committed to this marriage, that is something that is that is what I accept as part of my identity. The option to, when stress came, look elsewhere, would never have been on the table. Instead, the thoughts were, well, I'm not a man who would ever cheat unless I was faced with the opportunity. Because it, I was a conditional human being. I didn't have any sort of unconditional values that I appreciated. And I think that I know that if I had said to myself, no matter what, I'm not going to look elsewhere for validation outside of my marriage. Like, that's not acceptable to me. I make, I've make i made the decision to choose my wife and to choose this marriage and to choose my family. It's just making that decision and then acting on it. That is. That is how you start to build 
a life that you have designed. You have to design these things. You have to actually make decisions that are going to affect your life in the long term or else your life just starts to happen to you. And that's what happened to me is I got stressed in my marriage. I got overwhelmed with life. The debt was setting in. This was before we left for Oklahoma City, but the, you know, I had 20 plus thousand dollars of college debt and they were calling me every day and it was stressing me out really bad. And we had a bunch of, you know, well, we had two little kids running around and my wife was pregnant and I didn't feel like I was getting enough attention because I was a giant toddler and I felt really lonely and stressed out because I also had not made a decision that I was going to learn how to communicate. I just kept it all inside and I never told the truth about how I was feeling. So she had no idea that there was anything wrong. She had no idea that she wasn't doing what I needed her to do. She knew that I blow up sometimes and it really didn't make sense as to what I was blowing up about because I'd been hiding everything else that would have led up to that point. And whenever it came to a boiling point and somebody else said something nice to me, that decision was still open because I hadn't made it. And life made a decision for me. Said, hey, you've been tempted. What are you going to do? I don't know. That's enough. That's enough to, to get you in a situation where now, because you have no values, you don't know what to do. Do I blame anybody but myself for this? No. I wish I would have been taught earlier on that there are these unseen decisions that you need to make. That there are these conversations that you have to have with yourself, that there is a standard that you need to live by or else you will become, you will be tried over, over and again. And you will be, I'm sorry, there is a standard you have to live by and there is a code that you need to apply or else you will be tried over and over again. And you will fail over and over again because you have nothing to stand on as a foundation. You are a conditional human being who moves with their feelings. And whenever that is all that supports you, you will be weak. The flesh is weak. Like it just is. But your mind can be strong and your will can be even stronger. And then if you bring that all together and you are then fortified with something higher than yourself, then you're really, really strong. I had none of that. I had made none of those decisions. And my marriage almost died because of it. I'm so thankful that it didn't. I'm thankful that we were able to get through that. And she was able to put up with me for the time it took for me to understand that there was decisions I had to make. You know, she, I could probably say that there was decisions that she should have made that she didn't make. Do I want this man to be the father of my children? Am I okay with this kind of person being in my life? after what he's done. And, you know, I hate to say it, but I'm glad that she didn't make those decisions because the answers probably wouldn't have gone in my favor. But now we've, we've, deci we've decided to start designing a life together that has bigger goals and has bigger meaning and has bigger and deeper connection because we actually have these conversations now. None of this is off limits anymore. Mostly it was because I wouldn't tell her anything. I wouldn't talk about how I was actually feeling. I would lie and suppress the emotions. Sometimes it wasn't lying to her. It was lying to myself. So I was telling her the truth about how I thought I felt. But once I, I look back at those times and I realize I was really unhappy because I wasn't talking. I was so emotionally constipated that I literally could not function at the level in which a regular human being should be functioning. I was just, just too gummed up. And feeling the difference now, I don't know how I couldn't have seen it. But I know that I couldn't see it, and I know that there are other people out there who can't see it as well. So if you are not asking yourself these decisions, if you're not you know, actively making decisions to design your life, I challenge you to start asking yourself some questions. Like, what is the code I live by? What is the standard that I apply to my everyday process? How do I protect myself from life happening to me? 
Am I living on purpose? Am I designing my life? Do I have goals that are actually driving me to move forward every day? Or do I just do the same thing over and over again because it's what I started doing and it's what I keep doing and that's just what I do? Because that's not life. I mean, I guess it's life, but it's not living. I encourage you to try to explore that there's a different way. And that different way is to design your life. To start making decisions that are based on a plan for something bigger for your future. But first you have to stop lying. First, you have to stop pretending like you're okay. First, you have to make a decision to step into a life that is powerful and then figure out how to do it. I can tell you, I can help you live your most, your most powerful potential if you're willing to make the decision that so many people aren't willing to make. Most people will not even look at their lives and say, is this what I want? And even if they will, they will not add or they will not decide yes or no. So ask yourself, is this life what I want? And if it's not, say, what am I going to do about it? And if you are struggling to connect with your family on a deeper level, like you're having the distance that I had whenever my wife and I were unable to communicate because I didn't know how, or you're struggling with having the deep conversations with your children, I encourage you to join me in my free webinar on the Connect Method. The Connect Method is my method I've designed to reawaken or re-engage in your most loved relationships that have gone stagnant. Those can be children, those can be your parents, those can be your brothers or sisters, but mostly your spouse. If you are not talking to your spouse about the deep important things because of what you're hiding or what you're scared of, or just because you forgot how to talk to them on a deep level, or in my case, you never knew how. I never knew how to have the deep talks because in my family, we just blurted out the meanest thing that came to our mind. And that's how you had a, that's how you had a deep conversation. We just hurled insults back and forth until somebody's feelings were too hurt and they quit. And so not surprisingly, that did not work in my marriage. And so I just stopped communicating. Well, there is a way to have the deep conversations to speak about tough and meaningful things that will move and drive your relationship forward to better, newer heights. But most people don't know them. Most people don't know that there's a better way to communicate. And the Connect Method that I'm teaching Thursdays at 3.30 p.m. Central, um, the link is in the link is in the show notes. Link is in the link is in the show notes and the link will be in the YouTube description. <clears throat> I strongly suggest you come to this free webinar and get this information because it will change the way that you communicate with the people you love the most. And it will allow you to engage in a deeper level of communication that will allow you to develop stronger bonds, even with people that you haven't spoken to in a long time. This method allowed one of my clients to recapture an estranged daughter she had not spoken to in years. And it will work for you too. If there was ever love there, this method will work if you are willing to apply the rules that go along with it. I would love for you to join me to learn more about it. The link is, sorry, should have had this ready. Uh, The link is www.impulsive.life forward slash connect. So that is the the webinar registration link. It is www.impulsive.life forward slash connect. Connect. And that's where I'll be teaching the Connect Method Thursday, this Thursday, starting this week at 3.30 p.m. And I'll be teaching that every week until until I get enough, you know, enough feedback to take this client to a course. I'm sorry, not take this client. Until I get enough feedback to take this free webinar into a course and I build a course out of it. So I would get it now while it's free um, because once it's a course, it is going to be cut off and I'll be teaching a new webinar. But um, that is it for today's show. I think that we've talked a lot about what the cost of indecision is. And, you know, I, I think that it's also important to to remember that there is a huge financial cost on the table as well. I think that 
for me, I've left hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table by being indecisive. Considering that I went to college the first time and I didn't decide if I wanted to be a student or a party boy, I wanted to try to do it all. Um, I decided that I didn't know if I really wanted to be a firefighter, if I wanted to do something else, and I left that job. There's a lot of different ways that there is a lot of money being left on the table by not making decisions. If you look at all of the most rich and powerful people in the world, they will tell you that making decisions is how they got their money, not just letting life happen to them. So anyways, that is it for today. If you're curious about more of what I do in my coaching business, check out AuthenticIdentityManagement.com. And there's that my page for now as I switch to the impulsive brand. and. If you're curious about what the impulsive brand is about, just a brief note on that. The reason why I am choosing impulsive is because there are impulses that we've been told to deny our entire life. And those impulses are actually trying to guide you to your purpose. They are trying to guide you to deeper connection. They are trying to guide you to everything that God has for you, but you've been told to ignore them because you are broken and you are wrong. You are not. You just need to have a framework that allows you to unleash that potential in a way that is structured, safe, and protected. If you are able to capture this framework and understand how to apply it through, uh, sorry, through stacking and tracking, using the core four, living by the code, and applying the impulsive methodology, you unlock unlimited potential inside you. I promise you that there is something special about you that you've been hiding away for years and years because you've been told that your impulsive nature is wrong. But they were wrong. It's time to unlock the impulse of you. That's it for today. I will talk to you guys again on this show next week. But I will go live again tomorrow because that's what I do. Thank you so much for spending the last 30 minutes with me, and I hope that you will come back again next week. Good night, everybody. P.S. I'm growing out my mustache, so... Feel free to make fun of that. My wife says she likes it. Good night, everybody.